Hi everyone and welcome to this new video about steady state analysis. We continue with the RLC circuit. This is our example number four. In this example, we will analyze the RLC circuit using the mesh current analysis, as we did in example number three. In this case, we have a new element in the circuit, which is a dependent source. It is a dependent source, the symbol for a dependent source. We have four uh, types of different sources, this is one of them. So we have a voltage source here actually, but the value of it, of this voltage source, depends on the current which is flowing here. So it's actually called current controlled voltage source. So it is six times Ix. For example, Ix is uh, two amperes. This will be six times two will be uh, 12 amperes of I have 12 volts for this one. Okay. What, are given, what, are, what we have is the following, we have the voltage source Vs, we have the resistor, the inductor and the capacitor and also the dependent source here and all of the values are given here. And what we'd like to know is to calculate the steady state current Ix again in time domain. How do we start? Now, as we did also in the previous videos, we start using for steady state analysis, we start first converting the elements in the frequency domain. So we will start first determining the X of L x of c which are the reactances of this uh, component and we transform our sources which is in this case just one in polar representation so it will be given all of them in frequency domain so if i now first start with xl which is the reactance of the um, inductor it will be omega times l and omega is 100 which is just the radian frequency as shown here so it will be omega times l will be 100 times 0 0.02 will be 2 ohms. If I now move to x of c, which is 1 over omega times c, and 1 over 100 times 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 3, this will result in 4 ohms. Now the source Vs, which is a vector, will be 10, which is the amplitude of the voltage source, and a phase of 60 degrees. I can do that easily because it's the cosine function and I can just take over the amplitude place it here and then take over the phase and place it here and don't forget the unit. Okay, now that's for this part. Now the next part is actually because I want to carry out the analysis using mesh current analysis. I will make the meshes also in this circuit. So I have two meshes. I will make the left mesh as shown here it will be I1. It's a current vector and it will be also a vector it will be I2. So I have the two currents, I1 and I2, and I will develop for each mesh uh, equation. So we have uh, mesh 1, which is, if you circle around in this direction, which is our positive orientation, I2 will be fighting back, and I1 will be, of course, in the same direction. I will have the R plus JXL, which are the impedances in series, but I will also have minus JXL times I2. And they will be, of course, equal to the Vs. So if I now write down the equation like that, I have the following. R plus J XL times I2, I1, I mean, which is our positive orientation for this mesh. And a minus J XL times I2. And these are all Vs. That's actually for mesh 1. If I now go to mesh 2, What do I see? I have positive orientation circling around is the I2. So it is JXL plus minus, because it's a capacitor, minus JXC times I2. So let me write it down. So it is JXL plus minus JXC times I2 minus, this is fighting back. I want so it is minus J times XL JXL times I1 and I have a plus because it is a plus I see the plus first and then the minus it's plus six times IX and this will be zero what do I also see is the following I see that I X is equal to I1 in this case, because this, this is the current circling in this left loop, and it's exactly uh, equal to Ix. So I can also substitute for Ix, I1, which will leave again here equation with two unknowns. I have then two equations and two unknowns, that is actually 
uh, doable. Otherwise, we have uh, a new uh, equation required to go for the third unknown. So we have the substitution for ix is equal to i1, and I call continue. What I do now next is I will substitute the values for each of the equations. So I have the r, which is 8, plus j2, which is already calculated, so it is times i1, minus j2 times i2, which will be 10 phase 60 degrees. Now, what I like to do here is I will make it also in the order first i1, then i2. So I will have first minus j2 i1, and then something like something for the i2. The first i1, and then i2. So I will have minus j2 i1 plus 6 this is also i1 so i will have plus 6 i1 and then plus j2 minus j4 times i2 which will be 0. now i can now make this of course uh, i can place this in in one uh, one factor so i will have 6 minus j2 that will be of course for the second mesh and for this it will be the minus j2 and it will be much more easy easier to read so it will be my uh, six let me erase this so it will be six minus j2 times i1 minus j2 times i2 will be zero so what do i have i have actually now two equations equation number one and this is the equation number two all right what do I do next? Because I would like to calculate each of these individually, I will have to rewrite one of these equations and substitute that equation again back in one of the uh, equations I have here. So I will rewrite this one, so equation number two, in this form. So I will have this expression. I will have I1 in terms of I2 or other way around. I will have I2 in terms of I1. I it doesn't matter. So if I now write down the following, I will make the blue. I will have j2 i2, which is equal to 6 minus j2 times i1. If I now convert all these uh, coefficients for i2 and i1 in uh, polar representations, so I will have 2 phase 90 degrees i2, which will give me, or I can leave it out actually doesn't matter actually you can also go with the rectangle representation so i will have i2 will be 6 minus j2 divided by j2 times i1 and if you simplify this you will have minus 1 minus j3 times i1 so what i did is the following i do 6 divided by j2 which will be minus j3 and also minus j2 divided by j2 will be just minus 1. So this is actually the expression for i2 in terms of i1. And this is actually called equation number 3. What do I do next? I will substitute this equation, equation number 3 and equation number 1. So actually the following step. So let's move on and do that. So substitute number, one, number 3 in 1. What do I have? Now I have the following, it is 8 plus j2 times i1 minus j2 times i2, which is now minus 1 minus j3 times i1, which is 10 phase 6 degrees. So that's actually the following. So I will also leave that out as it is, so 10 phase 60 degrees. I will now group all the imaginary and real parts of this uh, term. So I have only i1s here, but I have also real and imaginary parts. So if I now group all of them together, so if I make now i1 and open the parentheses, for the right side I will have still 6, 10, and 60 degrees. I have the following. If I look correct, I have 8 as a real part, and I have minus j2 times minus j3. And together, 
will be 8 plus actually for this one 8 plus minus 6 so it will be 2 together so it will be 8 minus 6 just uh, to emphasize that we have the real part 8 here and from this part we have uh, minus 6 and I have a j2 here I have a plus j2 there so it will be 4 so I have j2 and again a j2 it will result in i1 times 2 plus j4 will be 10 phase 60 degrees what I do now is I would like to calculate i1 now the best way to do that is convert this expression in the polar representation and then divide that uh, the term so I will have for that for this expression going from the rectangle to the polar representation will be 4.47 and the phase will be 63 will be 10 phase 60 degrees if I now continue calculating the I1 will be 10 phase 60 degrees divided by 4.47 phase 63 degrees so I am actually I'm almost done what I do is I do the divide the magnitude so 10 divided by 4.47 and 60 minus 63 so it will be in total 2.24 and then phase of minus 3 degrees and we're actually almost done because we have the uh, vector for I1 in, in the frequency domain and this also Ix. So if I now say in time domain, if I now make it in time domain, so what is the time domain representation of this one? So time domain, I have the following Ix as a function of time will be 2.24 cosine, what was the frequency? It was 100, so that will be again 100t. And the phase will be here minus three degrees and it will be of course in amperes so that's actually the answer for this analysis so we have 2.24 times cosine 100 t minus three degrees that's actually for this example and as you can see it is again first converting all of the elements to the phasers in the frequency domain carry out the calculations and again transform back to the time domain such that you have the expression as it's required so this actually for this example we continue again with other examples so keep in touch and if you have any comments or suggestions or uh, any questions please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible and see you next time